So let me start the recording. Record, yeah. So now in the last class we have seen uh, how to move from one BFS to another BFS, right? So we had started from this, uh, you know, uh, this table which is representing the origin. And uh, then we have to decide that which variable to enter and which variable to leave. So, so can someone tell me that what is the rule of using and entering basic variable? How do you choose an entering basic variable? Yes, Nachiketa. Nachiketa Rajans. Are you there? Pratimesh, Pratimesh Singh, no Nachiketa you are not audible, Pratimesh are you there? Pranjal Kaushik, Uh, no sir, I do not know. No, you, you don't know. You have not attended the last class. No sir, I uh, actually can't remember so. Who can tell me that how to choose an entering basic variable? It's a minimum ratio test. No, no, no. See, you first listen to the question. The question is that, okay. see, you see this table, right? So this table is representing the origin 00, zero and the augmented solution is 00, zero 4, 12, 18, right? So currently x3, x4 and x5 are the basic variables, fine. Now I move from this, or this table to the next adjacent BFS. So I have to choose one entering basic variable and choose the living one. So what is the rule of choosing the entering basic variable? Lowest coefficient. Lowest. Mm, so Maybe most negative, most yeah. negative co coefficient in the objective row, right? Why? Why is that? Why I am choosing minus five? Maximization problem. Maximization, right? So, sir, so you get expression coefficient of z is maximum, then it maximize more. Right. Okay. So suppose X2 is chosen to be the entering one. Fine. So X2 will enter. And then which one will leave will be give will be given by the minimum ratio test. Isn't it? How to conduct yes, minimum ratio test? RHS divided by the coefficient, positive coefficients of the X2 column. Right? And choose the minimum one. So X4 will leave. So X4 will leave. Right. So we have discussed up to this point. Now the problem is that when you write x2 instead of x4 here in the basic variable, then this table needs readjustment. Right. Readjustment in the sense you always want that okay, if I if I take x3, x2, x5 as base, then what will be my solution? And that should be reflected in the right hand side. Right. So how to do that? So we observe that in this table we maintain an identity matrix for the basic variable so for the in this example if you look at this portion this is identity matrix for x3 x4 x5 so now what is happening x2 is entering and x4 is leaving right but you if you look at this column of x2 it is not identity structure right so what do you want 
you want to replicate the column of x4, this column, right? 0, 0, 1, 0 here. Fine. So how to do that? So you, uh, you know, there is, so this is called Gaussian elimination. So how to do Gaussian elimination? So you first identify a pivot element on number. Okay. So what, what is that pivot? So where it has to be one and around it all will be zero, right? So it is decided at the intersection of the leaving row and the entering column. You see this, this is the intersection two, right? So here I want one and the remaining entries must be zero. So then I can, if you see that if I keep it one and the remaining zero, so essentially we are replicating this column of X for zero, zero, one, zero. So we can say with this new base, again, I have generated an identity matrix in the coefficient uh, in the coefficients, right? So the right hand side again gives you the direct solution for this basic variables, right? So how to how to uh, do this Gaussian elimination? So you, after identifying the pivot element, which is at the intersection of the leaving row and the entering column, you divide it by an appropriate number to make it one first. So here it is two, so I have to divide it by two. So then it will be one, right? Then I have to make the other entries in this column zero, right? So the second column is already zero, so I don't have to do anything. The first is minus five. So how to make it zero? How to make minus five zero? By doing Gaussian elimination. Row operations. Yes, row operations. So, so you, so, if you divide it by two, then uh, you know there will be some change here, right? In this in this row, so and it will be one, and then you have to multiply it with five and add to this first row, so then it will be zero, right? And then uh, it is uh, this entry, this two again, it needs to be zero, fine. So again, you multiply it by two, the pivot row, right? And then subtract from this last row then you'll be having zero. So after doing this Gaussian elimination, you get this next step. So I want you to actually do it with your own, you know, on your own, uh, just to see if you are getting this table or not. So this is the next adjacent BFS which is having this base x3, x2 and x5. So x2 has entered you see and then x4 has left. So if you look at this table, you will see that, you know, you have an identity matrix for x2, x3 and x5. And see, if you look at the column of x4, after doing the row operations, automatically it is not an identity structure anymore, right? But that doesn't matter because I have x3, x2 and x5 as in the base. So my solution is 466 and the value of Z automatically comes to be 30 and which you if you remember, you know, this is representing, you know, this was my problem, right? So we started from 00, zero then we had moved here 06. So this table represents this solution 06, where X1 is 0 and X2 is 6. You see X1 is in the non-base, that means its value is 0 and X2 is in the base and its value is 6. And these are the slack variables, the slack values of x3 and x1, right? So the augmented solution is 0, 6, 4, 6, 6. Uh, sorry, 0, 6, um, and then x3 is 4, x4 is 0, and x5, 6. So its augmented solution is what? 0, 6, 4, 0, 6, right? Now I want you, we, now we are at this point, right? I have this table. Now I want you to perform the next iteration using this, using the same principle of 
choosing the you know the entering variable choosing the living basic variable and generating the next table can you do it on your own basically in the graph from here this point i'll move towards this direction i'll get this point 26 right so just see if you apply the next iteration on this table whether you are getting this point or not I give you five minutes of if you have any question that how to make this table or how to perform the, the these steps on this table in order to generate the next table you may ask otherwise you please go ahead and do it and tell me show me your table for two six for the next you know iteration already some hints are given here Please, each one of you do because unless you do it on your own, you won't learn. So this should not be like a movie, you know, that I have just come here to see what is going on. So you have to also participate. I can ask randomly anyone to show me your solution. So all of you, please try. Who has done it? Yeah, Amit. Amit yeah. Kumar. Yeah. Yes, you want to say something? Yeah, I have done it. Okay. So, what you have done, you tell me. Uh, what, what solution you are getting? Uh, I will open the picture in the chat. So which one? So first tell me. First tell me some, you have this table, right? Yeah. So so which one will enter? Uh, X1 will enter and uh, X5 will leave. X1 will enter and? And X5 will leave. X5 will leave. So yeah. this is done by, so X1 you have chosen, comparing yeah. the coefficients, this minus 3 and 5 by 2, right? Yeah. Okay, so most negative, so this one. Okay, and uh, by doing minimum ratio test, you have chosen this x5, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, so it has left. Fine. So then, how do you uh, uh, construct then, uh, the next table? I have to make it uh, zero, 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 and one. 
yes uh, zero 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 and one this is the pivot element right yeah 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 so, okay, so i divide the i divide the last row by three mm -hmm. and then uh, i perform operation to make it zero 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 one okay and on the right mm -hmm. hand side uh, in the first row uh, i get 36 value so are you getting this table this one yeah yeah okay so you see this is the two six the corresponding yeah. table is two six right yeah. x one you see the value of x one is coming as two and x2 is 6 and what is the augmented solution can you tell me from this table so 2 6 is the value of x1 and x2 right in two dimension so yeah. if i want to write the bfa augmented bfs so x1 x2 and then what will be the values of x3 x4 x5 uh, 2 0 0 uh, so x3 is 2 here right yeah. and then um, zero, zero. x4 and x5 are in the are non-basic, right? So, zero, yeah. zero. so they are not in the way. So they are set to zero. Fine. So now, can you tell me whether this table is optimal or not? Because you have to again, otherwise you have to again perform the next iteration, right? So you have to check for optimality. So how uh, do you all check for the all the coefficients are positive in the are positive or zero, right? Yeah. So that means this you declare as optimal fine and the optimal objective value z is 36 isn't it yeah clear okay sir what was the solution for the previous table the basic solution uh, so can you can you speak a little bit louder Sir, for the previous table, what was the solution? I just want ah, to see that. Wait, wait, wait. This was the previous table, right? So the solution was, you tell me. So in two dimensionally, if I write x1 and x2, what will be the solution? Value of x2 is 6. And what is the value of x1? 0. 0 right so 0 6 in two dimension and what will be the corresponding augmented solution from this table so 0 6 and what will be the value of x3 x4 x5 the slacks x3 is 4 right and x5 is 6 right so 0 6 so this is the augmented solution Sir, so here also all the slacks are positive or zero. So how did you say that the optimal solution is the next one? Like there also they were positive or zero, here also they are positive or zero. No, no. Yeah, yeah. No. So when you check for optimality, whether it is optimal or not, you see that whether there is any negative coefficients in the objective row corresponding to non-basic variables. So in this objective row, you see these are these two are non-basic, right? X1 and X4. What are their coefficient? Minus 3 and 5 by 2. Which means that still you have a chance of increasing the value of Z by taking X1 to the base because it has minus 3 coefficient. Right? So currently it is 0. So if you increase it, now the objective function is likely, value is likely to increase. So whether it is optimal or not, is decided by the signs of the coefficients of the non-basic variables in the objective row, right? It is not the value of slacks. Value of slacks will always be zero or positive because that is the constraint also, right? All in standard form, all the variables will be zero or positive. It cannot be negative. Okay. If you have any other question, please ask. Otherwise, we'll move to the next topic. So, which is a very important topic. You know, <coughs> the the tie breaking in simplex method. Okay. Now, where where can 
where can you get a type so first of all when you look at the you know entering basic variable so you compare the coefficients right minus 3 minus 5 or minus 3 3 by 2 right this is this way now it may happen that you may have the same coefficient like say minus 3 minus 3 for two non basic variables so there is a tie like which one to choose to enter the base right now this tie can be broken arbitrarily uh, because it essentially means that whichever direction you will decide to move will give you the same benefit you will get the same amount of gain fine so this tie can be broken arbitrarily any any one you choose when whenever there is a tie in the choice of entering basic variable right and then comes the next one the type for leaving basic variable now this is a bit tricky huh so when there will be a type for leaving basic variable when you get the same ratio yeah, same ratio okay same minimum ratio so then also you can choose any one hmm. but sometimes it can it can land you in trouble hmm. uh, so i'll just explain this uh, uh, scenario with an example okay uh, say we had this original problem with these three constraints right now i have added another constraint here which is minus 3x1 plus 2x2 less than equal to 12 right so this is the another inequality i have added in this direction right now if i if i try to solve it so here you see when i add this constraint what is the resultant feasible region does it change the feasible region of the problem no no right no sir. so still the feasible region is the same okay so that is one observation so essentially this constraint is redundant so even if you add this your feasible region doesn't change okay that is one observation but this type of redundancy in your system can land you in trouble uh, so if you, you you try to solve it by simplex you apply simplex and try to solve it what will you get so first you will start from the 0 0 right and then you move to 0 6 okay. so when you move to 0 6 uh, so I would like you to actually write down the table. So already this first table you are having, right? Where you will see that uh, because we have this new constraint here, um, uh, the fourth one. So I have to add another slack, which is say x6. So because this constraint will be written as minus 3x1 plus 2x2 plus x6 is the slack for this and equal to 12, right? So in iteration one, where we are at the origin, you see what is the is in the base. So now how many variables are there? Six variables. And how many constraints? How many constraints? Four, right? Four. So size of the base will be four. Isn't it? So you see the first at the origin, you have non basic 0, 0, x1, x2, and the remaining all the slacks are in the base x3, x4, x5, x6. Right. Now, when you perform, uh, you know, these, uh, uh, you know, minimum ratio test and all, just see what happens. So, you include this in, the, in your table and see what happens. Tell me. Just try to solve it, solve this problem using the same tabular method graphically you can say intuitively you know graphically if you look at the graph what will happen at this point so next point will be this one if you if you choose x2 you know to include in the base so you move along this direction right you will get this point 06 so intuitively at this point what will happen 
so x2 will enter the base here at this point x2 will be in the base right but which one will leave that means which which variable will fall to zero at this point which variable will fall to zero graphically can you say which variable will be zero at this point already x1 is zero right x1 x so it was was zero at the origin also right that is fine x6 ah x6 and X4, only x4 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 and x4 right so x4 and x6 both will will fall to zero but you know you cannot allow both of them to fall to zero i mean you cannot allow uh, i mean uh, you have to choose only one leaving this variable right so ideally you will see there will be a tie in the minimum ratio and then you will be you, you have to choose whether to choose x4 to leave or x6 so there is a time in living basic variable right so suppose if i choose uh, here i have chosen in this iteration 2 i have written see x6 has, x6 has left so from iteration 1 x6 i have chosen to leave right however if you compute this table for iteration 2 you will see that x6 is left it is fine it is non basic but x this x4 right x4 remains in the base but its value will be zero right because it has to be zero anyway from this graph you can see it so even if x4 remains in the base its value will be zero and that table will give you you just try and tell me whether it is correct or not whether you are getting a tie in the minimum ratio and if you are choosing x6 to leave then what is the new solution that you are getting and verify in the new solution the basic variable x4 will have value 0 although it is in the base its value will be 0 is it happening or not Verify it. So can you once write the equations? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll just go back to this. So you write down this new constraint, this minus 3x1 plus 2x2 plus x6 equal to 12. So this is the new constraint being added to the system, right? And the table was initial table. I'll show you. So this is the initial table, right? And these are the equations. So please add that new constant to it. So you will have a, another row at the end, right? For x6 slack. Whoever is done can raise your hand.
Whoever is done, please raise your hand. In the first step itself, you will see the time. Yeah, there is a tie. Yeah. So, yeah. And if you choose, say, X6 to leave, you choose X6 to leave and form the next table. So X2 will enter and X6 will leave, say. You have a choice between X4 and X6, right? So what is the solution you are getting in the next table? So what is the corresponding augmented solution for 06? You will get 06 right in the next table. So what is the augmented solution for 06 here? What is the value of X? Three, four, five, and six. Six will be zero here, right? I have chosen X six to leave. So, what is the value of X? X three, X four, and X five. Four zero six. Huh? Four, four? zero six. Zero six. Zero. This one. So zero six four zero six zero. Minus twelve, sir. Minus twelve. Huh? No, 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 no minus will be there. From where we are getting minus? Yeah, that yeah that will be the solution. Zero six four zero six zero. Okay, fine. Let us go ahead with this. I'm not uh, verifying it. So let us assume this is the correct one. Okay. So so you see that these two x one and x six are already labeled as non-basic, right? And these four are basic. But within the basic, I see that x four, you know, is having the value zero, which is a bit strange okay it is allowed to have zero hmm. but when it is zero then it is called it we have a name for it for this bfs which is known as degenerate basic feasible solution okay so this type of solution where one of the basic variables is zero will be called as degenerate bfs okay now, why do we call it degenerate? It will be evident in your next iteration that it, it causes some problem sometimes. And what is the problem? Suppose in the next iteration, iteration three, uh, which direction I should move? In the next iteration, as per say graphically, I should move along this direction, right? Toward X1. 
so x1 should enter the base right so if i decide to move along x1 i increase the value of x1 from 0 to some positive quantity it enters the base so someone has to leave the base right so who will leave the base Who will leave the base? X4. X4 will leave the base. So suppose if if I say uh, why X4 will leave the base? So ideally I would get that that this point, you know, in the next situation, right? So at this point, what will be the value of X4? X4 is the slack associated with that line, with this line only. So what will be the value of X4 at this point? Zero. 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 So why X4 will leave the base? Okay. So it will become non-basic, you are saying, right? X4 value anyway is zero, even if it is in the base, right? So if it leaves the base, okay, fine its value will be zero that's understood but um, you know uh, what about x6 what will be the value of x6 at this point and what about x5 what, what is the value of x5 at this point? x5 is also 0, right? Yes, sir. Zero is zero. Yes, sir. Yes. So, we, I mean, then at this point, x4 is 0, x5 is 0, right? So, ideally, x5 should also leave the base, right? It should become non basic. But anyway, if we even, even if we keep it in the base, its value is 0, say it will again be a degenerate solution, you know, that is fine. But what about x6? What will be the value of x6? Sir, some x6. positive value some positive value right but have we have we chosen x6 to enter the base it has left the base you know at this point right in this iteration 2 it has left already left the base and we have chosen x1 to enter not x6 right so this point we will we never get this point because then x6 should enter the base x6 should have some positive value so you perform this next iteration Ah, and see that you will never reach this point, you will be stuck here. So, again, the solution that you will get from the simplex table, okay, it will be the same point again, 0, 06. Just try whether you are getting the same solution or you are actually reaching the next. Verify. Just perform the simplex mechanically. You don't have to think. Huh? It is a mechanical process. So you choose the entering and then perform the minimum ratio, choose uh, test and choose the leaving, and then you write the next step and see what is the solution. You don't have to think much. So when you conduct minimum ratio test, definitely you will choose x4 to leave the base, right? Because x4 value is zero, so zero right hand side is zero divided by any coefficient will be zero only. So x4 you may choose to leave, right? So if you choose x4 to leave and x1 to enter, then what is the next table you are getting?
because the solution is not changing. Solution? Uh, because the ah, RNGs who is of this? Uh, who is this? Who is this? What is your name? Ashutosh. 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 Ah. So you first tell me how you have done it. Ah, say, by just one minute. Uh, let me write here. So, so at iteration two, uh, what was your right hand side? Uh, so I'm writing here. Two. Iteration two, x two, x three. X4 and X5 was in the base, right? Fine. Oh, yes, sir. X3, and the, X3, what was right hand side? Right hand side was? Hmm. For X2, right hand side was 6. 6. For X3, for, uh, for X3 it was 4. Mm -hmm. For X5, it was 6. 6. And for? Okay. Uh, yes, sir. For X5. Ah, and for X4, it was 0. For X4. Zero. Yes. Okay. And uh, what was what is the column of uh, this entering variable x one? Minus twenty one by two, I think. Uh, that uh -huh. that value. That no, no, not z. Uh, from say uh, x two onward. For x two onwards, uh, it was minus three by two. Minus three by two. Mm, then for x three, it was one. I've overwritten, sir, so maybe there but minus 3 by 2, 1, and uh, for x4, it was 3, for x5, it was 6. 6. This was the ratio? Uh, yes, sir. I have overwritten, so, but it is, that, that's what it was before. Okay. So, then how, what is the minimum ratio? It is 0 by 3, so this x4 will leave, right? So x1 will enter and x4 will leave, isn't it? Yes. Sir. Yes. Yes, sir. So then this sir, is the pivot element. Sir, but because huh. x4 ka RHS was already zero, so mm -hmm. RHS will not change for any of the variable that will stay there. Yes. So when right. the x1 will enter here, right? When x1 will enter, uh, will 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 replace x4, and you make this Gaussian, you do this Gaussian elimination to make this. Uh, you know, column 0, 0, 1, 0, right? What will be the value of x1 here in the right hand side? Zero. Resulting value 0, right? So, what does it mean that you try to move along x1, you try to increase the value of x1, right? But you couldn't, you are at the same point, 0, 6. You check the next table that you will get, it will be the same point, 0, 6. Right hand side will change, but if you write the augmented solution, it will be the same. Right -hand side. Because uh, the the row that we are uh, performing elimination with the RHS is zero, so for x2 x3 x3 the RHS won't, won't change. Ah, so what is the solution we are getting in the next table? Same sir, zero six Same, four zero, zero six. six right? So zero six. So that's my point. So my point is these de degenerate solutions. You know, when one of the basic variable is zero, can sometimes cause you this problem you can be you can get stuck in a perpetual loop you won't be able so if you code this suppose you write an you know a code for this simplex method to automatically do all these things right then your code will be stuck forever sometimes okay but you know uh, sometimes it may also happen that if you just change your choice so instead of so when you had a minimum ratio, you know, a tie in the minimum ratio, you had chosen x6 to leave, right? Instead of this, if you would have chosen x4 to leave, then you would not get stuck here. Because then x6 will be in the base, so you will easily get this point where x6 will have some positive value, okay? So you also try this out later. Hmm. So instead of, at the initial iteration, the first iteration, instead of choosing x6 to leave, you choose x4 the other one and you will see that the simplex method is progressing very slowly without any problem and you will get the optimal solution right now the question sir, is yes sir in minimum ratio test uh, we consider that the ratio should be non-negative uh, number right non no the minimum RHS. ratio minimum ratio can be conducted only when the coefficients of the entering column are positive, strictly positive, not zero, not negative. 
Okay. But that is for the entering column, not for RHS. RHS, so anyway, will be always positive or zero, right? Because the variables will be only greater than or equal to zero, right? So RHS are the values of the basic variables. So they will always be either zero or positive. Most of the times they will be only strictly positive. If they have zero, you may then you know that there is a degenerate BFS. Okay. Sir, if we change the if we change the condition for uh, the minimum ratio test to be uh, the that the RHS by uh, the coefficient should be positive, strictly positive, then can no, we? No, 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 no. Uh, RHS, these RHS divided by the coefficient of the entering column, provided that that coefficient is positive, strictly positive. That is minimum ratio test. You cannot change it because there is a logic behind it, and we have shown it in the last class that from where it has come, the minimum ratio test. So there is a mathematical derivation behind this. So you cannot change this condition, okay? That why we are doing this, you know, although it seems a mechanical process that divide RHS by the positive uh, coefficient of the entering column, but there is a reason behind it. There is a mathematics behind it and we have shown it in the last class, right? So you cannot change this condition, okay? Okay. So degeneracy usually happens when you have, you know, redundancy in your system and sometimes it, it may cause you problems in, in terms of this perpetual looping or sometimes it may not. So if you are, if you are found to, uh, found to be stuck in the loop, then you simply change your choice while choosing the, you know, while breaking the type of leaving basic variable and that may solve your problem. Sometimes it may not solve also. Like the problem structure could be such that even if you change your uh, choice, choice, you may again get into perpetual loop. So uh, the idea is that whenever you find uh, this kind of you know uh, problem, you have to go back and see that whether you have whether your problem statement has the right uh, you know essential set of constraints. Also. So some constraints may be redundant. So if you remove that constraint, your problem will not. Uh, the solution, optimal solution will not get affected. So you have to then uh, go back and study those things. Okay. Is the concept of degeneracy understood? Now another problem could be there. So these are called actually special cases of simplex where you know many things can happen so one we have shown degenerate solution another problem could be there suppose you know in this problem x1 and x2 so i have this problem max 3x1 plus 5x2 subject to x1 less than equal to 4 so only this inequality is there say x1 less than equal to 4 right so what will be the objective value We have already discussed it in class. So what is the feasible region here? Feasible region will be unbounded, right? So all these, you know, this is this entire thing is the feasible region. So it's unbounded. And so the objective value can be increased as much as you can, right? So if you draw the contour, it can just go on, fine? So this is actually called an unbounded solution. Now graphically, you know, for this small problem, you can always plot and see whether the feasible region is unbounded or not, right? But suppose you when you have multi-dimensional problems, then you cannot plot it and cannot see. Suppose you have 100 constraints with 200 variables, right? How do you know that whether it is bounded or unbounded? We'll never know right, by looking at it. So there is a way to find that out. And what is the way? So from the table, simplex table, you can find out. When there will be no choice for giving basic variable, then you can tell that it is unbounded. 
okay so in this example i have written this simplex table and now you see if i want to perform minimum ratio test i have only one variable x3 say here so it's like right so 4 divided by 0 0 i cannot consider right? minimum ratio test is strictly positive so i cannot conduct minimum ratio test which means that i cannot choose living basic value what does it mean so it means that in this graph x2 and x1 uh, sorry x2 and x1 right and with this constraint you know when you when you move along x2 basically here x2 is entering right so when you move along x2 there is no limit so nothing will fall to zero no other variable will constrain you you will not hit any constraint boundary right so this is the meaning so Whenever there is no living basic variable in your table, you cannot conduct minimum ratio test, then you, take, you, you say that the solution is unbounded. Okay. Now you tell me, I will give you another special case, which is a multiple optimal solution. This is also discussed and now we'll see how to do it in the table, right? So graphically, we can always see that what is a multiple optimal solution. Suppose I have I have, uh, you know, this this problem and then the my objective function. My objective function is say parallel to this constant, say, right? This is the red line objective function. So then I know that okay, the optimal solution will be anything will be any point in the on this line segment, right? Graphically you can see, but in the simplex method, how will you detect these multiple optimal solutions? Because see, anyway you will start even for this problem, right? You will start from origin, right? You will come here, and the moment you reach here, at this point two six, you will see that all coefficients will be, you know, zero or positive. I declare optimality. That's fine. That is also an optimal solution. But how do you detect that there exist other solutions also which are equally optimal? How do you detect it from the simplex table? You please think about it and let me know tomorrow. Okay. Is there any question? Is the question understood or not? Graphically, we can always see if there are opt multiple optimal solutions or not. But from a table, how do you detect? Think about it. You make you take this objective function z 3x1 plus 2x2, so which is parallel to that third constraint, right? You do the simplex iterations and find out what is the optimal solution, and then you tell me how do you detect that there are the next adjacent corner point is also optimal in this case right so if you move from this point to this one that will also be optimal so how do you detect that in simplex okay so can you uh, send the syllabus sheet unavailable on your b